Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us after the lunch break. I know it can be hard to pull yourself away from all that lovely food outside. Um, so I'm really excited here to be joined today by John, um, talking all about change, which I love that we're having this conversation because you have been at Ogilvy for 38 years, is that right? Almost four decades, yeah. Right. So you know a lot about change. Yeah. But, uh, sorry, jokes aside, I mean, um, you've been in the CEO role now at Ogilvy since the start of last year, if that's correct. Yeah. So what changes have you been enacting on the business that obviously you know so well? Yeah, no, I mean, you know, we're changing because our clients are changing and they're changing because consumers are changing. So it, for us, it's a sort of burning platform moment. Uh, we've been really focused on three things. One, clarifying our purpose as a company. Uh, we're going to double down on the view that uh, making brands matter in a world that has become more fragmented, more complicated. There are some that believe algorithms will take over for brands. We don't buy that, as important as algorithms are. So we've been trying to clarify to our company worldwide uh, what our purpose is. We're also, I, my promise to Martin Sorrell is that we would get simpler. And so we have basically, we had become a holding company. Too many companies, too many self-interests, not enough common interests. And so we're really focused on being one branded company integrated around the world, one business model, one financial framework, uh, working together, not as a bunch of piece parts. And then finally, we need to unify everybody around a sense of common mission. I mean, Ogilvy is a great brand, but we've been a little bit too reliant on the brand of the past, not shaping the brand for the future. And so uh, that's, that's really our, our, our core change. The change has really been about unplugging the complexity and putting the company back together as a unified whole. And how long does that take to happen? I imagine it's not just a click and that process is done. I, I was hoping it would be done by now. Uh -huh. But uh, no, I mean, we've, we've been on the journey for 20 months. And I think we called this the messy year. The first year was about clarifying the direction, communicating to everybody. This has been a year of, of lots of experiments, lots of undoing things, taking, uh, simplifying our operating structure, building a whole new uh, operating system that will unify us in terms of how we work. And so next year, we're going we're to uh, reveal a sort of relaunch of the brand. And next year is about executing all the things that we've been putting in place this year. So, and we need to get back to growth. I mean, you know, the, the single biggest challenge we have in our industry right now is growth. Right. And, and how does that fit into the wider um, holding company? So you mentioned Martin earlier, yeah. Martin Sorrell, CEO of WPP. And he's been talking for years about this idea of horizontality, so getting all of his agencies um, to work better within the business, to work towards one goal for clients. That's right. So how does that work with Ogilvy fitting into the wider structure? Well, of my promise to Martin was one Ogilvy should make it easier to, to drive horizontality. If we know what we do and we're confident in what we do, we should then be a much better partner to many other parts of the WPP group. Mm -hmm. And that's already happening. I mean, we have more. Uh, client assignments now, working with multiple WPP companies, of which we're a part, uh, than ever before. But that doesn't mean we need to give up or, or lose responsibility for our own brand, our own model of adding value to clients. And so it's a both-and agenda. And you mentioned growth is one of the biggest challenges at the moment, and um, you know, no, no more so kind of obvious than, than within the advertising industry itself. We've seen some successive quarters for some holding companies. Um, where they haven't been showing growth, or at yeah. least they've been showing, showing signs of a slowdown in growth. What are some of the um, macro events that have been affecting businesses like yours? I mean, our in it's always been true that our industry is a, bell a bellwether for the economy at large and for the mindset and behaviors of our clients. And the fact is right now, many, many clients are struggling with growth. So in the short term, without innovation, without building demand uh, at a differential level, they're focused on costs. And the costs that they're focused on are the ones that are easiest to cut in the short term. And that tends to be costs that we're responsible for. So marketing, Marketing, advertising, advertising communications. Fees. You know, and particularly as companies are investing billions in new technology, much of which we see here, are investing so much in building the platforms of the future to some degree, that has offset the kind of shorter term, medium term brand demand investments that they would, they would want to make. But Martin Sorrell talks about this endlessly. 
If these companies want to get back and build sustainable shareholder value, they need to invest in growth, they need to invest in building their brands, and we have an essential role to play in that. And so I think this is more of a cyclical issue than it is a, a long-term trend, but it's, a, it's, it's tough at the moment to get this balance. So it will come back once they see their volumes are declining, they'll need to return back to marketing again. We're going to come out with some research in, in a few weeks that shows those companies that invest in brand building over the short, medium, and long term are always the companies that outperform others in terms of profitability, revenue growth, shareholder value. And so at the end of the day, you are not going to cut your way to growth and prosperity. You have to invest, the question now is just getting companies back and focused on medium and long term investment for, for the health of their brands and frankly, the health of their businesses. And let's talk then about you know, the subject of change. Um, they may well be investing more in advertising uh, and marketing, but we're seeing a lot of change with, within clients. Clients are taking uh, some of those services in-house and, yep. and employing specialists. We're seeing consultants parking their tanks on agencies' lawns. Yep. Um, how do you make sure that when they do return to advertising, and, and well, that they at least increase their advertising spend, they're doing that with the likes of yourselves and the rest of your companies? And, and I think that's the, the, the biggest threat to our business, is our relevance. So in a world where clients want more control, um, they want control of their data, they want control of the technology platform that delivers value to their customers, they want control of the things that they put through those platforms, it's very easy to say, well, let's do it all ourselves. At the end of the day, we think that we still are going to be an enabler of clients uh, doing this, whether they do it in-house or whether they rely on outside partners. Because at the end of the day, we should be building the cultures that attract the most creative, the most innovative, the most free-form thinkers when it comes to uh, you know, brand building and creating value. And so if we build the right cultural context for the best people in the world to want to you know, do their best with us, we think that ultimately clients will, will see that as a huge, uh, a huge necessity and a huge value add. But there is no question in the short term, the competitive landscape has gotten much more complicated. I've worked with management consulting firms almost my entire career. Most of them had a very well-defined role of advice giving in the C-suite, largely to the C chief executive. Now they're working their way down through the entire business system of our client organizations. And so there's no question we're going to have to up our game, in some cases collaborate with them, but, in, but also have a competitive uh, point of differentiation from them. And how does that affect you from a talent standpoint? So I imagine, and I've, you know, I've seen articles being written about people moving to, from the advertising industry to companies like Deloitte and Accenture, also like Google and Facebook. Those companies arguably can offer larger salaries. They have cool bean bags and slides in their <laughs> Great offices. Great food. Yes. So free food. So what can you do to, to um, convince talent to stay and also um, convince you know, new emerging talent to join the ad business? Now, I think that ultimately this comes down to a battle of brand cultures. And, and that's another reason why we are so determined to unify Ogilvy around a single uh, around a single brand and a, and a common operating system and a shared set of, of common values because we cannot compete with the likes of the sexy emerging uh, brands if, we don't, if we're not a place where people think they can do their best work. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and that means being an environment that promotes diversity and inclusiveness, that allows our youngest talent uh, and to, to grow faster to be more mobile. We, you know, we have an amazing competitive advantage in having a global network. More and more young people want to grow their careers in multiple markets around the world. We need to enable those things to happen. That is why I am the, the CEO of Ogilvy. I, I started as a college dropout, no qualifications. I am a product of the Ogilvy system and we just need to make sure it's working for, for everyone that we want to attract who will, who will serve clients well. Sure. And let's talk about some of the work that might be changing. Um, a year ago when I was at Web Summit, we were waking up on the Thursday to the news that um, Donald Trump had been um, elected as the President of the United States. We're, uh, <laughs> we're, you know, we've, we've had Brexit, or well, we haven't had Brexit, but yeah. we're, we're soon to have Brexit. Um, we've seen what's been happening in, in Catalonia. Um, it's, it's a very political time at the moment, and it's a very divisive time. Yeah. And as an agency and as a steward for brands, it must be difficult sometimes not to get too caught up in the whirlwind. And you can really risk polarizing some of those consumers as well. We saw it happen with 
Pepsi, for example. Yeah, yeah. So what do you do to kind of stay within the zeitgeist enough to be relevant and enough to um, share those brand values that are important, but also you know, not overstep the mark? What can you do there? Yeah, I, I, I think it comes down to the importance of brands again. Brands who know who they are, know what they believe in, know what their values are, and know the kind of connections they want to create with all of their audiences and are confident about it, those are the brands that will transcend the, the political issue of the day or even sometimes the cultural issue of the day. And I think brands that try and play an opportunistic game and try and play off of some of this just put themselves at somewhat more risk because of risk of getting it wrong. And it's almost impossible to get it right these days in terms of somebody will have a counter point of view that they can share uh, with their friends and, and amplify in social media and, and take you on. So I think it comes back to knowing who you are, mm. knowing your belief set and knowing that you can defend that in any context. It's interesting, I just completed a month of, of top 20 market reviews. Almost every market in the world feels challenged by the current political environment. And so the sense of uncertainty, the sense of polarization, is no, there's no question in my mind it is having a negative effect on a sense of optimism for the future and a sense of short-term growth opportunities. So I think sooner or later, let's hope our politicians figure out we need to be better together, not, not separately. Is there anything agencies can do to uh, lift this, this current mood and yeah, atmosphere? We have to be, op you and I talked about this, we have to be optimistic. I mean, I think we have to be able to paint a view of the future that transcends the short-term challenges of the day. In many cases, conferences like this, bringing out new technologies, new, new experiences, making people's lives easier and better, that's the kind of stuff we need to celebrate. Uh, and I think if we do that and you know, have the, take the long view on these things, the short-term disruptions will, will, uh, will take care of themselves. Sure. But speaking of short-term disruption, perhaps this is a long-term disruption, actually, but you know, we're at Web Summit. Um, I don't think many people would probably consider Ogilvy a technology company. Um, I imagine you would argue in some, in some ways you are. Yeah. Um, so what do you do to keep ahead of the latest trends and innovation, and also, not, again, not lean in too far to something that might become tomorrow's yeah. fad? Well, the truth is, in our business model today, we're working with every single one of the major tech platforms. Um, much to my consternation, we have over 100 different w uh, uh, technologies at work in Ogilvy right now. We probably should have six. Right. So way too much complexity. Yeah, yeah. Four, yeah. You know, four different HR systems, four different finance systems. We that have to, silly. it's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, we have to bring these things together. We have to connect them better. You know, almost everything we do every day impacts a technology in some way, shape, or form. Our work is all digital. We're plugging into every digital platform in the world. Uh, and so the fact is, technology is running through the heart of everything we do. And we just need to be better at applying the technology for our work, in how we work, and the value we create for clients. And that's why coming to uh, Web Summit and other events around the world is so important because it gives us a sense of where it's going and the things that we need to do better in the short term. Definitely. Now I must say pace of change, that phrase, is something I hear all the time at conferences like yeah. this and advertising conferences. Because so much you can record it and make it into a kind of Chinese water torture soundtrack or something. You hear it so <laughs> much. The thing is though, it, it, it is true. You know, there is a lot of change happening at the moment for a business like yours. Yeah. But what makes you excited? What change are you most excited about going into 2018 that you think is really going to make a difference for, for you and your clients? I mean, having been in the company my entire career, my focus every single day is trying to figure out how to future-proof our business. So I look at change as just one of the fun things that we have to go through to make sure that our business is future-proof. We just did an employee survey around uh, the entire network, and we found that belief in our brand is very high. People's belief in their day-to-day their -day manager is very high. We have a culture of teaching and, and nurturing our talent. The thing that is not high is confidence that we are helping every single person in the company get to the future. Mm -hmm. We need to do a much better job of explaining how all the things we want to do differently make someone, an individual employee's life better and easier. And that's, a, that's both a hand-holding exercise, but it's also an exercise of really engaging them in a way that they can understand where, where they can go in the future. You know, and, and yeah. I think at the end of the day, that's my primary responsibility, is to make sure that all the employees of the company feel they are in an environment where they can do their best work 
that they don't have to you know, rush off and worry about making sure their, their LinkedIn profile is up to date and all the rest of it, that they feel confident and, and excited about the environment we're creating for them over, over time. It's why I have stayed for nearly 40 years. I have woken up every day feeling like Ogilvy was giving me something that I could use to better myself. And I think it's that value proposition that for an employee is, is the number one priority for me. Fantastic. Well, that was a whistle-stop tour, but I think we can all agree there was lots of really exciting info there. Um, if we could give a big round of applause to Ogilvy CEO John Siebert. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.